very warm welcome back to Citizen Power Breakfast. Now, we were in the midst of a heated debate about Mira, and we just want to wind that up now. So if I could ask, let's start with you, Dr. Mutusia. What are your closing remarks about the Mira debate, about the ban, and your perspective on regulation? Okay. Yeah, I will repeat that uh, we've seen some harmful effects of Mira uh, in terms of uh, in some vulnerable people who use huge quantities and who start using when they are young, they get predisposed to getting psychotic episodes and even manic episodes. And again, in our psychiatric patients who are confirmed to have uh, schizophrenia and bipolar mood disorder, when they use Mira, then uh, the, the disease is not controlled the way we would want it to be controlled and we have many relapses. But all said and done, my position would be I would want some regulation into sale and consumption of Mira, the way we regulate alcohol, the way we reg regulate cigarettes. Because people need to know they are can make a choice. As they make their choice to chew Mira, they need to know that in some people it can be harmful to their health. And again, we need to prohibit sale of Mira and use of Mira and, and, uh, for young people, for under 18s, the way we do for tobacco and for alcohol. Okay, Mateki, do you have any uh, any comments? I, I don't know. Uh, my, my issue with her is that um, it, it, the Mira affects certain people, not the general population. My, my business as a doctor is to protect the health of everybody. And yes. even if it's one person in a thousand who gets sick, I should get concerned. Because if, if, if it's me who is sick, then, then it, it becomes 100% me being sick not one percent of but the but population but, but i like your idea of not banning but regulating yes i would suddenly advocate for regulation not banning of course i, I would say for as we do research if we ever find a reason to ban it based on research then we shall discuss that but we need to know that it's a process by the time you ban a substance it's a process you consider so many things not just health issues you would consider social issues you would consider economic issues. So there are many things you consider. You don't just ban uh, considering one aspect. And, and for me, my interest is in health. So if in future there's any reason to ban Mira, then I would not oppose it. But so far, from what we know, I would advocate for Mira to be regulated and, and, and to have some controls, especially with the young people. And we need to sensitize that to the, the public that uh, as you consume Mira, you need to know that in some cases, some people can get sick out of it. Yes. Yeah, and uh, to you, Ms. Juju, what are your closing arguments and statements on the debate of Mira, especially when we look at mapping a future path to this very delicate issue? Uh, thank you, Michelle. I think we have started a process um, towards the future of Mira, and that begins with the, with the committee, the ad hoc committee that we formed in the National Assembly, uh, as I said earlier, we'll be inviting experts, and they'll come and talk to us. They'll tell us what they think and the statistics that they have um, collected in terms of MIRA, and we'll be able to make a report to the National Assembly that will guide the, the, the future of MIRA. But before then, of course, we'll visit other people, visit other countries, and get to know why they, they have banned MIRA, and see also, depending on our report, if we can persuade them otherwise. Otherwise, MIRA in the community is a crop that has been grown, it is cultural, and under Article 11 of the Constitution, the government has a duty to protect the culture of our people. It has a duty to even protect the crops that are grown by the people through the cultural diversity. So my position is that Mira, as we speak, is, has not been declared as a drug through any scientific research. And even doctor is saying, we are, this is a process that we are continuing, and they, it, there is more research to be made before any action is taken. But at the end of the day, I believe Mira also has to be regulated and controlled by the government, so that at the end of the day, even the farmers are able to benefit out of the crop, and we don't have um, a consumption of Mira where like, we have children, and uh, generally it is protected. It has to be protected as a cash crop in Kenya. Thank you. All right, fantastic. Mateki, do you have any closing remarks on this? I think I like the way of the both of them have said that uh, the, the solution of the matter is not to ban, it's to regulate. Just like um, 
because my concern, if you look at the damage that uh, can be done by Mira and the damage that is being done by, uh, to our young people by these drinks, the one in plastic form, the one that Nakanda should lo really look about, drugs that are uh, alcohol that is sold in kiosks, that is more damage that than, than Oka or even uh, Mira. All right, fantastic. Well, we've had uh, quite a variety of views uh, coming in, and I just want to wind up by sampling some views from, from the public, some views that people have actually sent in. Now, Phoebe from My Nairobi says, Mira should not be banned. It isn't a drug. Furthermore, I myself have used Mira for the past five years. If so, cigarettes, alcohol, and the tea company should be done away with and banned. So that's one perspective. And on the flip side, um, somebody sending in a view, not saying um, who you are, where you're from, but somebody saying, Mira has destabilized our children, being the gateway drug to other disastrous drugs, mostly affecting youth drivers, causing road accidents, and affecting unemployment. So those are the two ends of the spectrum there on this quite controversial debate about Mira. I want to thank you very much for watching, for sending in your views. We really appreciate that. Thank you all for, for being here and sharing your perspective on the issue. Well, that's it for our interview. Thank you for watching. We have news coming up next.